So we tested out the bikes by going to the coast and one of the problems I started to notice on my speedometer or this whole console was that the uh, speedometer was dying as well as the uh, liquid crystal display and the needle would drop down to zero. You can see it's on and there's no display and it would just keep falling to the bottom. And this is a sign of a charging system not working correctly or uh, a bad connection. And the problem was is that when I had the issue before where that cable had melted by the uh, um, rear of the motorcycle and the battery was dying, as the battery voltage gets lower uh, and it could no longer support the power for this, about five minutes before your motorcycle is going to completely die because the ignition's no longer going to be able to work, this speedometer will start to fail as a telltale sign. You'll watch the needle just start to fall down to zero from whatever speed you're going as this uh, uh, odometer starts to flicker. So I thought I was in real trouble, except for the fact that the battery charge was good. So there's another problem here. The most likely candidate, of course, would be the harness being disconnected. Now, I was sure, of course, that I snapped it in, but obviously I'm going to be looking at the harness one way or another. So I had removed the seat and I have uh, taken a look at this and the harness is, is connected and I have removed it and reconnected it again, uh, but to no avail, there's nothing going to the speedometer, right? Of course, I'd be delinquent in this video if I wasn't showing the battery voltage, which is showing 13 volts. This also demonstrates that the charging system has been working, because this thing obviously would have been dead after 100 miles of driving around with the headlight on, right? But what I should be doing here is displaying that the motorcycle's off and it's showing 13 volts. I'm going to turn on the key, which is obviously parasitic because the headlights can be running, the ignition system is going to be on, and we'll see what the voltage is then. And we can see that the voltage has dropped a bit and it's going to continue to drop, and this is obvious because now the battery is being used. This is perfectly fine. But it tells me that, that everything's okay. It's not like I turn the key on and the battery dropped to like 8 volts. And this motorcycle would start right up if I turned on the starter. So this is good. Battery's healthy. Electrical system's fine. I'd like to make a couple of more observations that I found from the road yesterday. There is an inertial connect or disconnect that either provides power or breaks the short. So if I lay on the throttle as I disconnect from the uh, clutch or... Or, or engage the clutch for that matter, uh, the speedometer will activate. And as I come to a stop, everything will die. That's one observation. The other observation is the speedometer and the display here break in tandem. So it's not a signal. It looks like the main power to this is what's going. And the other observation is uh, somehow the turn signal and turn signal cancel have something to do with this as well, but I can't say what it is just yet. On that note, I would like to apply power if only to run the turn signals. Interesting. The turn signals are not working on the bike. Okay, so we have a smoking gun here. So it could be a coincidence or the fact that the turn signal stopped working and the speedometer has power issue could be in fact tied together. We're going to have to break this open and take a look. As one would expect in looking at the switches here for the left and right turn signals, uh, they are closely aligned in the circuit with the harness here and this is the speedometer cluster and uh, uh, LCD display. So that was no surprise. Here is the harness that is met under the uh, driver's seat that is connected and disconnected to remove the gas tank. I knew I was going to be dealing with electrical problems, so I opened up the bike for electrical service. I've re-removed the tank. I've removed this shroud up front here. I've removed this panel as to provide access. And this gives me a path from the harness where it breaks out here all the way up front. The other thing I did was I removed the headlight to get in there and then do a series of tests to see what was working what was not working on the bike turns out not only do the signals not work and the tank doesn't work but the horn uh, did not work either and this will allow me to uh, test and troubleshoot or what I did was disconnect the harness over here run a very quick continuity test and ensure that the horn was good to the switch and it is good everything is fine uh, up in this unit there's no need for concern 
uh, testing this portion over here for the signals is good as well. There's a commonality between these two. They both ride the same fuse. In looking at the horn 36, here's the negative on the ground rail. The hot going through the horn as it's connected comes across to 52. 52 is a signal fuse. Come as no great surprise that 52 also extends outward and down to the, uh, the turning signals. Remove that plastic cover with lock and key again. We could expose our fuses. One is cleverly marked signal. Yeah, and it's trashed. Okay, let's swap it out. We'll put one in and see what we got. Yamaha actually goes out of their way to provide a spot for two spares, right? So I just pulled that spare out and put it in there. You can be sure I'm gonna be popping a spare in there before I close this up. Turn on the bike. There we go. Try out the horn. That's nice. Try the turn signals. There we go. This one. Turn signals working again. This doesn't solve the primary problem, but it did solve this problem, so we can move on to the next issue. I can't believe it. Watch this. The tank works, and this is the craziest thing. Because I wouldn't have suspected that this was a fuse problem. Because when you give it throttle, it worked fine. It, it was like inertia driven. And we got to take a look at this fuse. Because is it so close together that when you would give it inertia, the fuse would short together and open up the circuit somehow? It would be absolutely crazy. I can't believe it. I've, I've never seen something like this. If it was totally dead... I would have checked the fuse, but the fact that this motorcycle worked when it was on the road driving and then it would die when you would come to a traffic light is unbelievable. Take a look at this fuse. There's like a hair of metal that with inertia goes and acts like a switch and reconnects the fuse. You see that little bar of metal going across between the open? Mm -hmm. And it no longer becomes an open. It actually connected and made the, the speedometer turn back on. Do you see that? You see that little piece of that little metal bar in the fuse there that just sort yeah. of welded itself to the end? So the fuse was acting like a switch, like a gravity switch. So when you'd hit the gas, it would turn on. Oh, look at that bug. This is unbelievable. I, I ha I've never seen that before. Usually when a fuse melts, it melts and it's open and it's done. This is like a temporary contact switch. That's amazing. So that's it. In a million years, I never would have thought to check the fuse, you know, because it had continuity. It was an intermittent problem. And sure enough, it turned out to be the fuse with a condition I had never seen before. So I buttoned everything up, everything on the bike works. And that ends this uh, troubleshooting event with the electrical problem. So thanks for watching.